In designing drying systems, we often face questions such as what should be the airflow rate or what will be the change in moisture content of the sample being dried or what is the energy requirement for a dryer. For these questions, we need to conduct a mass and energy balance. In this tutorial, we will see the steps involved in conducting both mass and energy balance around a dryer. So let's uh, draw a little schematic of a dryer through which a product is moving and we will call one of the sides on the right hand side as 1 and left hand side as 2. On side 1 we will have the uh, product entering the dryer which is entering at a certain flow rate m dot p at a certain temperature tp1 and at a certain moisture content small letter w1 and it leaves the dryer the product leaves the dryer at tp2 temperature and moisture content of w2 air enters the dryer at a flow rate of m dot a at a temperature ta2 since this is a side 2 with a humidity ratio expressed as capital w with a subscript 2 and air leaves the system at a temperature TA1 with a humidity ratio of W1. So let me just write down the various uh, symbols that we are using. M dot A is the airflow rate, which is kilograms of dry air per hour. M dot P is the product flow rate expressed as kilograms of dry solids per hour. Capital W is the absolute humidity. If you remember from psychrometrics, it's also called humidity ratio or specific humidity and it is kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. Small letter W is the product moisture content in a dry basis and the units will be kilograms of water per kilogram of dry solids. We, let's conduct a mass balance. Before we do that, we should draw a system boundary around our drying system. So this shows the system boundary. Now we can look at all the streams that are entering and exiting this particular system. So we have air coming in, which is M dot A W2 which is the humidity ratio, that's the amount of water that's entering with the air, plus M dot P, and the moisture content of the product is W1, so that's the amount of water coming with the product, then there is moisture leaving with the air, so it's M dot A times W1, plus we have moisture leaving with the product and so that is m dot p times lowercase w2. So that is the balance for the amount of water entering and exiting the system. Now let's write the energy balance. Now energy is coming in with air so we have m dot a times the energy content of the air which you will express as HA2 where HA is the thermal energy of air and we will express the units as kilojoules per kilogram dry air and similarly we have heat of the product so we have M dot P times HP1 where HP is the thermal energy of the product and the units are kilojoules per kilogram of dry solids. Note that everything in this balance is based on either kilogram of dry air or kilogram of dry solids. That equals m dot a, that is the energy leaving with the air, m dot a times h a 1 plus energy leaving with the product m dot p h p 2 Plus, we will add a term Q. Q 
Q is the heat loss from the dryer because the dryer may not be insulated. Uh, so we can express that with this arrow uh, as the energy loss from the drying system. So we have a mass balance for the amount of water entering and leaving the drying system and we have an energy balance which gives us the amount of heat energy coming in with air and product and the amount of energy heat energy leaving with air product and also through any losses from the drying system. Let's briefly look at a couple of other equations that will help you in determining uh, HA uh, which was the energy of the air. HA equals CS times TA minus T0 plus W times HL where CS is the humid heat of the air and from the tutorial on psychrometrics you will recall that CS equals 1.005 plus 1.88 times the humidity ratio of the air which is expressed as capital W and the heat content of the product HP can be calculated by knowing the specific heat of the product we'll call it CPP times TP which is the temperature of the product minus T0 plus the moisture content of the product times the specific heat of water times TP minus T0 note that T0 in these two equations equals zero degrees that is our reference temperature so for air we have TA minus T0 where uh, TA is the dry bulb temperature of the air and TP is the temperature of the product uh, minus zero in both cases so these two equations are helpful in uh, determining some of the unknowns as we had considered at the beginning of this tutorial.